What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Svenko and today, oh baby, I didn't think this day was coming, but today we're doing True Draco. The ban list was just announced and Dynamite Knight came back to three, which is insane for the deck. I think this deck is a meta sleeper. It's definitely an anti-meta deck that can compete and stay up to pace with today's format just because of all the insane cards that it can abuse. But before we get into the deck profile though, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We have a ton of post ban list stuff coming up, so you guys want to stay tuned for that. Also, thank you guys for 7,000. We hit 7,000 just recently. Let's make it 8,000. And I believe in the Spangle Squad. I trust every single one of you. So thank you guys all for watching. I really hope you guys enjoy today's deck profile. I don't want to keep you waiting for too long. So with that, let's get into the deck profile. Okay, so just before we get into the video, there's two things I want to mention. The first thing, of course, like I said earlier, the new ban list is here, which is why I'm showing off this deck because it just got really, really buffed, both directly and indirectly. But the second thing I want to mention is you guys can see that Dynamite still says that it's a two of. That's because EDO Pro actually hasn't updated just yet, but it's now at three. So don't don't get it mistaken. This card is at three of now. Okay, it's on the new ban list. All right, October 3rd, this is going to be completely legal. So first things first, I want to say here is we are playing three of the Dynamite Knight that just came off the ban list. This card is the best card in your deck. This is no joke. This is the best true Draco monster. And having access to three of this now is extremely powerful. It makes this deck very, very consistent. You're also playing three of your Ignis Heat. Ignis Heat is really good because it searches your spell cards. And your Dynamite Knight, again, searching your trap cards is really powerful because that's what you want to get into. Your spells and traps. Once you get them in rotation, you're in a really good position. But then we're only playing the one Majesty Maiden. Now, the reason people used to like to play two or three Majesty Maiden was because you wanted to search your Dynamite Knight as fast as possible. Of course, this being your best true draco you wanted to get to it but now that it's at three you actually don't need to be maxing out on majesty maiden because she truly is the worst of the true draco monsters also you never really want that many monsters in your hand that's why we're only playing seven because this deck pretty much lives and dies by its traps and its floodgates so for that reason you don't want to draw a hand with like four monsters because you can't really do anything with it if you draw a hand with like a monster plus like three traps and a spell you're in perfectly fine shape so for that reason we're just playing the necessary ones which is dynamite as well as your ignis and then the just the one majesty maiden as another name if you need it and then for these spells and traps we're playing three true draco heritage as well as three disciples of the true draco now this card is insanely powerful because this is going to help shuffle back your cards from your graveyard to give you more recursion and both of the spells are also going to give you draws which is really cool so heritage and disciples give you an extra normal summon give you a draw this one gives you recursion so they're really really powerful and on top of that the spell cards if you guys don't know have their own effects where if they're sent to the graveyard so if you tribute over them or if you pop them with any back row hate they will activate and essentially they can pop any back or your opponent control so spells or traps these cards can get rid of so the really cool thing about this deck is it's really good going first but it's also really good going second because going second if you tribute over your spells you can pop your opponent's back row if you tribute over your traps which you guys are going to see in a second they actually destroy monsters your opponent controls so going first and second this deck is extremely powerful but moving on now we are still playing the one draconic diagram you have to be playing this it's generic searcher for your deck and then we're playing three true kings return as well as three true draco apocalypse now the reason you have to max out on these is obviously because they're just really good on their own apocalypse is insanely powerful right return special summons from your graveyard which is really nice gives you extra monsters on your side of the field to help push for damage and you want to get to these as fast as possible because once you do and once you again have them in rotation you're in a perfect spot because you only really need like one of each name for example in rotation you don't even need one of each but if you have like two to three of the names in rotation as well as your floodgates you're pretty much just going to be winning the game so that's why you want to max out on all of them and that's it for the true draco stuff so you guys can see here these are the monsters the spells and the traps we're maxing out essentially on everything that we can with the true dracos then we have to move on to our floodgates now this is what the deck is built on we're playing three skill drain yeah we have to be playing three skill drain i mean it's at three here in the tcg the card's insanely nuts you have to be playing three skill drain it's really really powerful we're playing three rivalry of the warlords as well as three there can only be one now these are just i think the most powerful floodgates in the format today of course none of them are searchable we have draw power in the deck which you guys are going to see on top of the draw power that the spells give us right but these cards are insanely insanely powerful skill drain is really good and so is actually all of these floodgates are really good because they kind of all do the same thing you can sit on one monster you can afford to sit on a single dynamite knight or a single ignis especially if you have something like a dragonic diagram on your board which is also going to boost their attack so you can sit on a single monster with floodgates and still win the game so that's why you really want to max out on i think the best floodgates of today's format if you have a rivalry and there can be 
be only one on the board your opponent is not playing through it skill drain is also really good in today's format and the really cool thing about this deck that i do want to mention of course i'm not showing you guys a full side deck here but the really cool thing is you can always swap the floodgate cards with your side deck according to the matchup so for example something like goes in match which is a really good card you guys can actually side goes in matches and side them in so that's a really cool thing about this deck these are the main deck floodgates but you can always side in any floodgates that are relevant in any format essentially right and then for the non-floodgate trap we're playing three dogmatica punishment which means we are playing the extra deck version that you guys can see here i actually think the extra deck version of this deck is the better way to go you don't need monarchs erupt especially because skill drain is now at three monarchs erupt and skill drain is just way too redundant so that's why i'm not playing the both of them the extra deck version actually makes a lot more sense because as you guys can actually see here in the side deck which i'm going to talk about right now i just want to show you guys that super poly as well as ultimate slayer are both very relevant cards that you guys can play in your side deck it gives you access to these cards because you're playing the extra deck version of the build and you have access to cards like punishment which is just insanely powerful because a lot of time this can just be a straight pop two right so being able to pop two cards being able to have access to super poly being able to have access to ultimate slayer that's why i think the extra deck build of this deck is actually the best way to go and because we're playing the extra deck cards we can play draw power like extravagance which is extremely powerful right the fact that we can just draw two for free essentially we don't really care about the extra deck that much we just need any cards in there for our punishment to be live and if you guys side super poly and slayer then those are going to be live so if you just have a free draw two and that draw two gets you into like a rivalry plus like a true draco apocalypse let's say you're in a perfect spot so that's why you want to be playing the three extravagance the extra deck build of this deck i'm telling you makes the most sense because it just gives you access to so many really powerful cards and it gives you access to be able to beat different decks in different ways now of course the main way you beat decks in this deck is put up some floodgates you put up some true draco goes and you're going to be slowly poking them breaking their board one by one right but the really cool thing about the extra deck build is when you get access to something like super poly you can start breaking boards that way before you even do anything else so that's why i really like the extra deck build we are playing two duality as well duality is just a really good card it gets you three cards deeper into your deck essentially and you don't really special summon again at all in this deck i mean unless you're siding in the super poly like i said but if you're not siding in the super poly then pot of duality is perfectly fine for you right so you have to be playing this in the main deck no matter what even if you're siding this you're still playing this by the way you're not you're not, not playing this this card's too good and then because of the ban list didn't hit the card which i am very ashamed i don't even want to look at you guys in the eye because i'm so ashamed of this but you have to be doing it unfortunately because it's still so relevant and konami refuses to acknowledge this card and that's two mystic mind as well as one terraforming so the terraforming of course is really good because you can also search your diagram but you want to be playing two mystic mind again this deck is really good going second but imagine your opponent has a big board a wide board that you really can't out right away you can just activate the mystic mind and then slowly start to break the board whether it's setting a trap tributing over the trap to pop a card your opponent controls whether it's waiting out for punishment to pop cards your opponent controls no matter what the situation is mystic mind is just one of those cards that just lets you wait and especially in a rogue deck like this mystic mind is just extremely powerful again Again, I'm sorry I have to show you guys this card. I'm actually ashamed. I'll be honest with you. I, I don't want I didn't want to look at you guys, but this card is just so good in this deck specifically, so you have to be playing it. That rounds off the main deck. It's a 40 card main deck. I think this main deck is very, very consistent, very, very powerful. Moving on to the extra deck, though. We're playing just the best extra deck cards for this strategy, which is three Entis. Of course, Entis is one of the best cards to send off of your Dogmatica punishment. So you want to be playing three of this. Three of the Fossil Warrior Skull Knight, which is just a pseudo Entis essentially. It when it's in the graveyard, you can banish it to pop a card your opponent controls so it's basically just entis 2.0 right so we're playing these six and then we're playing three garura garura is really good because it's a really good super poly target but also if it's sent to the graveyard you can draw a free card so it helps you with draw power so you're playing three of this and then we're playing three fair jeet fair jeet is really good because it's kind of one of those things that also fixes your hand right if you draw too many monsters and you send a fair jeet off of the punishment you can use the fair jeet effect to draw a card and put a card back into your deck so let's say you have like you know two ignis in your hand you can always put back the second one to get a free draw so that's why i think fair jeet is really good and again this card is really good because it gives you a link monster for your ultimate slayer right we're playing one omega of course it's a good card to send off punishment as well as if you banish these ones there's just different options right but it's also a good ultimate slayer target and then we're playing two win pegasus adding nister this is also just more disruption if you send it off of your punishment you guys can see the entire extra deck is just built to do multiple things it's built to either disrupt your opponent with your punishment when they send them to the graveyard or it's built to fix your hands by drawing cards or like fair g defect where you draw one put one back right so that's why i think the extra I just really think the extra deck build of this deck is the best way to go, especially post ban list. Now, this is why I wanted to talk about it being buffed directly and indirectly. Directly, it got buffed because we have Dynamite Knight back at three. Indirectly, it got buffed because Red Reboot went to zero. Red Reboot going.
going to zero means that you are not afraid of your traps resolving. You know they're always going to resolve. You know post side deck, they're always going to resolve. A lot of people are not going to be on a lot of back row hate in today's format because tier limits is probably going to be the strongest deck. Yes, people might still have a cosmic cyclone here and there, but that's not going to destroy your strategy. Your strategy is just way too powerful with all these cards. So that's why I think this deck is very going to be underrated this format. People are not going to think of it or not expect it, I should say. But when it comes up, it can win a lot of games. And again, you have access now to so many different side deck options, stuff like Super Poly, stuff like Ultimate Slayer, and then even stuff like Soul Drain, because that's really good against the tier limit matchup. Anti-Spell, you have cards like Gozen Match. There are just so many floodgates that you can now put into the deck in the side deck, and you can just swap floodgates out as you see fit. So that's it for the deck profile. I'm really happy Dynamite Knight is back at three. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I think you guys should definitely try this out for yourselves. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I know True Draco is one of those decks that, you know, we have to abuse Mystic Mind. I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. But we had to do it. The card is still legal. Konami. Listen, I'm not agreeing with the choices Konami made, okay? I'm not agreeing with these choices whatsoever. However, we have access to it. We have access to a lot of broken floodgates. We got to make use of it. If you want to play True Draco, you want to be competitive in today's format, I think this is a really good build to start off with. I think this build is very competitive. I think it can compete and I think you guys should try it out for yourselves. But guys haven't already make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one we upload five days a week here of course there's gonna be a ton of post balance stuff coming up so you guys want to stay tuned for that trust me you guys want to stay tuned there's a, lot, there's a lot of good stuff coming all right thank you guys all for watching i appreciate every single one of you with that spanko sign and out peace